Hey guys, Movie Fan here to bring you a brand new Cosplay Tuesday. I actually got a request from my friend Jordan Ramsey to do Rita Repulsa's Magic Wand. So, Jordan, this one's for you. Now, before we get started, you're going to need the following supplies. Cardboard, PVC pipe, scissors, utility knife, pencil, marker, printing paper, a combination square, gold paint with brush, and a chalk marker. A couple clamps, hot glue, black duct tape, red duct tape, blue duct tape, and gold duct tape. Hey guys, Movie Fan here to bring you a brand new Cosplay Tuesday. I actually got a request from my friend Jordan Ramsey to do Rita Repulsa's Magic Wand. So, Jordan, this one's for you. Now, before we get started, you're going to need the following supplies. Cardboard, PVC pipe, scissors, Utility knife, pencil, marker, printing paper, a combination square, a couple clamps, hot glue, black duct tape, red duct tape, blue duct tape, and gold duct tape. Okay, the first thing you want to do is get your cardboard laid out. Now, I happen to have some giant pieces of cardboard because I recently got a dryer and it came in a cardboard box. So I figured better save that. And it's a good thing I did because in order to make Rita's wand, the uh, famous circle has to be really big for the job. So this was perfect for it. What I did was I laid out the cardboard and I pulled out my newest tool, the combination square. I adjusted my combination square all the way as far as it'll go before I would lose this level here. What I did was I grabbed a big thick pencil. I put it through the hole at the end of the square. I grabbed another pencil and put it right down in that notch right there. I carefully held down the pencil that was in the hole, very sturdy, of course. Meanwhile, I pulled down on the pencil right in the black piece there and just drew a perfect circle. It takes a little practice, but you get used to it. After that, I cut it out and I traced it three more times. And that's basically how you get the main circle. Now, you're going to have to make another circle that goes inside. What I did was I carefully tried to judge where the circle needs to be. I traced it on to the other three and cut them out. Next, take all four of your pieces, get two of them lined up, and glue them together. Do the same for the other two. Now we need to make that bottom piece that goes right underneath the circle. This one I found to be a little interesting because there's really no point of reference except for the photos. So what I did was I just examined the photos very carefully and I grabbed my small ruler and measured the front and the back to six inches all the way. I created more lines that were six inches long all around the circle until I finally reached the end that I wanted. Then I connected them all in a simple curve and tried to copy that bottom piece as close as I possibly could, including the two circles. I don't really have any huge recommendations for this. Just try to do it the best you can. Freehand is really the only way to do it, I think. But also keep note that on the forward part that goes towards the tapered end, there's going to be a gap between there. So you don't want to have it go completely flush all the way around. I mean, you want to start drawing that, but you want to cut it and go around at a certain point. Once you get it all drawn in, I suggest you grab a small screw and punch the holes out of the two rings before you start cutting it out. That way it'll be a lot easier. Because if you do it the other way around, it's going to look like crap. After you punch the holes out with a screw, just widen it with a pencil. And then cut the whole lower part out. Repeat the process three more times. And just like with the circle, glue two pieces together and then glue two more pieces together so you got two thick pieces. Okay, now that we got those pieces cut out, now we need to connect the circles to make one whole ring, just like, well, in Rita's staff there. Now, before I get started, I want to acknowledge one thing here. Normally, what you should do, I would think, is you may notice that it tapers off a little. Now, with cardboard, I've never been able to master that, and especially considering how I got this cut, I don't see how I could taper that, you know, to where it just thins out the right way without something going wrong. So I didn't bother with that. Plus, at the same time, the PVC pipe I'm using here measures to about two and a half inches. So 
Because of that, I decided to make this three inches in width altogether. And I'm talking for the ring itself. Because, well, you got to give it some extra space. Now, you could use, you know, probably one inch PVC or one and a half inch, I would think. Or just a dowel that's one inch thick altogether. But I had that PVC lying around from the last project. And I had nothing else to use it for. So I figured, I got it. I might as well use it. Anyway, I think it works better this way. So... Now, all you got to do is just cut out the pieces that are going to form the circle on the inside and the outside. And how you do it is this. What I did was I found a couple long pieces, and I just laid it out on my table like so. Be sure that the perforations will go vertically, so that way you could roll it a lot easier, not horizontally. I put two clamps on it, one on either end to hold it down. I grabbed my newest tool, the combination square, and I adjusted it to exactly three inches, and I just used it and drew a line straight down. And then I cut it out. After that, I repeated the process about five more times, just in case. And then I just rolled them up and then I glued them into place, both on the outside and then on the inside. Now that that's done, I'm going to create the red ball that sits right in the staff. Now, I could have done this two ways. I could have either tried to create a ball out of cardboard, but... I can't do it. I've tried stuff like that before. It always comes out bad. Or I could have bought a red rubber ball, but I didn't see the point of doing that because what a waste, you know? So instead, I found a more cheaper way to do it. I grabbed a whole bunch of printer paper and just wadded it all together, one on top of the other, and I just kept going and going. And when I got the ball big enough, I covered it with red duct tape. Then I set the ball roughly where it should go. I traced a circle around it, then I cut it out, then I sat it in there and glued it into place. Okay, now that we got the ball inside the circle, now it's time for us to work on that lower piece. And we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to cut some strips to three inch sizes, just like the first time, and then we just glue them into place. However, while I was doing this, I found out that the circles I drew and cut out on there that would hold uh, basically a chain, that's not going to cut it, because... Well, they'll be too far apart. And so the only solution I could come up with was just to cut them both off right there and be done with it. Now, you could possibly cut out two circles and glue them onto the center of that piece, but I don't think it would work for something that's literally three inches in diameter. I think it's going to look kind of funny. So in this case, I'm going to call it more of an artistic license because... Truth be told, I don't have a gold chain to put on there anyway. And, well, even if I did, I don't know how I would be able to attach. I mean, I guess I could attach it with, like, dog tag rings, but you'd have to paint them gold or something. So that's going to be a hassle. So it's not worth it. Now, if you made it with a one-inch dowel and, of course, made it a lot thinner, then it would probably work. But I made mine three inches in diameter, so that's not going to cut it. But if you made it with a one inch dowel, I'm sure it would probably work there. But like I said, I'm just going to leave it off and be done with it. Just call it an artistic license. And truth be told, for something this size, I think it works better this way, to be honest. Anyway, what you do is just like before, you just get the glue and you just simply glue the cardboard to it. Of course, in this case, you'll want to just carefully fold where it needs to fold and just go down the line until you finally get to the top inner circle. Now that one we're not going to cover at all, because truth be told, we don't even need to, because that part is going to attach right to our circle. Now before we do that, we need to do two things. First off, we need to judge where this is going to attach on the circle. And how you do it is quite simple. Just put them together, like so, line them up, and take a good look at your reference photos, and just come to where you think it fits, then draw two arrows, on both sides of the circle, just in case, showing where the cardboard is going to meet up. Next, you're going to want to cut a hole for the PVC that's going to go through, or the dowel. What I did was first I grabbed a short piece that I had left over, and I put it on the inside to try to judge roughly where it should be. Because in this case, I want it to lean up right against the side piece like that on the inside. That way it'll give a more structural strength. And when I determined roughly where it should be, I put it on the bottom piece outside, I grabbed my pencil, traced it out, and then I cut it out. And then for good measure, I just grabbed the piece of PVC and jammed it right up the center. And we're not quite done with that yet, so we're not going to attach this right away. 
So instead, we're going to put it aside and make a few decorations. First, I'm going to start with the tube that has a cone attachment that's going to sit right in the front, right there. Now, how you make the tube is quite simple. What I did was I grabbed my combination square and measured it to pretty much the length that I see on the picture there. Then I grabbed a long piece of cardboard, cut it, and then I scored the cardboard vertically, of course, so it'll roll. Once I was satisfied with roughly how thick it would be, I cut that piece off, rolled it up, and of course I glued it shut. Okay, now that I got the tube made, I need to make three more parts for this. The first part is going to be a big triangle piece, which is going to sit right about here. This is an interesting little challenge here because I've never tried this before. How I did this was I grabbed a spare piece of cardboard and I basically drew a triangle to roughly the right length that I figured it would be. Once I cut it out, I grabbed my marker and drew several lines going from the top tip all the way through. As you can see right here, it should look like this when you're done. Then I grabbed my utility knife and scored every line. I rolled it, glued it, and I put some painter's tape on there to make sure it didn't come loose. After that, I did the same exact thing to create a smaller triangle, which is going to attach to the tube. However, the first one I created, it's going to need a little something extra. So I cut a small piece like this, and I basically did the same thing that I did with the triangles. I made lines, I scored it, I rolled it. After it dried, I attached the top piece to the big triangle. After that, I covered the big triangle with blue duct tape. Then I attached a little triangle to the tube. And I covered the little triangle with black duct tape. And I covered the cone with gold duct tape. Next, I'm going to make the accessory pieces that are going to sit right on the ball. Basically, it's these little claw-looking things that are on uh, you know, the red ball on Rita's wand. Now, I couldn't really think of a way to make it really come off like an actual claw claw. So instead, I just grabbed a piece of cardboard and created this teardrop shape. I repeated the process four more times, and I just kind of rolled them up every which way so I could shape them as best as I could. After I was satisfied with that, I covered them with gold duct tape, top only. I put them right where I wanted them and glued them into place. Next, I took a little initiative and covered the outside edge of the bottom piece with black duct tape making sure that I left a gap on the part where the tube was going to attach and also where the blue triangle was going to go. After that, I glued the tube into place, then I glued the blue cone into place. After that, cover your entire circle with gold duct tape. But be sure that you leave the bottom piece vacant because you definitely need that so you can attach to the lower piece that's going to attached to the wand. A little word of advice, I would recommend trying tuck taping the inside first and the outside rings and then cover the sides. Or if you want, you could try the sides first and then cover the inside and outside, whatever works for you. And now we're going to finish off our accessories by creating three special pieces. First, we're going to create a good medium-sized circle that's going to sit right in the center right there. What we do is we grab something to create a medium-sized circle I happen to have a old thing of plumber's tape handy, so I just created a circle out of that. I repeat the process four times. Now, two of them are going to be a base, while the other two are going to create like a basically a volcano edge, so it kind of jumps out at you a little. Once you got those drawn out, grab something smaller to put in the center of two of those circles. In my case, I grabbed an old spool of thread, and I just traced the spool twice. After that, I cut them all out. Next, I grab the two that have the inner circles. I cut the edge off like so, and I just cut the inner circle. Then I just rolled them up like this. Then I just glued one edge over the other. And here you have a volcano shape. After that, I grabbed some blue duct tape and put it in the center of my bottom pieces. Then I grabbed my little volcanoes and glued them into place. After that, I covered the top with black duct tape, and I just cut out the middle. And then I just duct taped that on either side. Now for the now you'll need to repeat this process one more time, except you're going to be making two smaller circles. 
And last but not least, I had to create that little symbol at the bottom. What I did was I just grabbed my little ruler and I just drew a straight line. Then I created a triangle at one end and I just grabbed my plumber's tape again and created a circle. And with the spool of thread again, I created an inner circle. Next, I cut out the inner circle. After I got rid of the inner circle, I cut the entire piece out. Then I traced it onto another piece of cardboard and did the same thing. Then I covered the top of each with blue duct tape and then I glued them into place. Next, you want to get the bottom piece and cover the sides with gold duct tape. Now, you could cover the entire thing with gold duct tape, but I knew I wouldn't have enough, so instead I just covered the parts that I needed. After that, cover the entire thing with black duct tape. After that, cover the sides of the top piece with black duct tape, just like this. Next, grab your chalk marker and go to the circle itself. And trace in and trace in the triangular shapes at the end of each black duct tape. Then cut it out. Now my plan was originally to use the chalk marker to create all those designs and to just basically cut them out. However, that didn't work out too well. Unfortunately, a good lot of it. Well, the gold duct tape uh, came up with it, and that didn't help matters. And plus, with the certain uh, you know shapes and all that, it was. Uh, it, it didn't work. So instead, I came up with a better solution. I got some gold paint and a brush, of course, and I just painted them in. After you got all of them painted in, grab your pole and glue it all together. Then cover your pole with black duct tape. And now you have yourself your very own Rita's wand. And you know what? I think this came out even better than I had hoped. Granted, it's... Uh, a little large and i'll admit it's not perfect compared to the series but hey not bad for a bunch of cardboard duct tape is it and you know what i can't finish it without saying this this is movie fan signing off and magic wand make my monster grow <laughs>